Today our discussion is about aortic dissection. Dissection. So, first of all, the other name for aortic dissection is dissecting hematoma. Dissecting hematoma in aorta. Right? Now we have to see there what is the concept of uh, aortic dissection. Let's suppose I draw a diagram. Let's suppose this is aorta, here is atrium, this is left heart. It's a very simple diagram. It's not truly an anatomical diagram. It's a functional diagram, right? Now look. Normally, blood from the left ventricle is ejected into aorta, right? And blood is moving into lumen of aorta. Is that right? Sometimes what really happens that there is an intimal tear. There is an intimal tear and a jet of blood enters through this intimal tear into media, media of aorta. And this jet of blood start dissecting or splitting the layers of the media and it may move distally or it may move proximally or in both directions. This jet of blood may enter into wall of aorta, it may start progressing distally or it may start progressing proximally. While this jet of blood through an intimal tear, it is entering into media and progressing within the media, it is splitting the layers of the media. It is splitting the layers of the media and creating a pseudo channel, a false blood filled channel within the wall of aorta. Right? You can say this is a false blood filled channel within the wall of aorta. Of course, you must be knowing the true channel should be within the lumen of aorta, not in the wall. And then you see it may create an additional blood filled, an additional, what is there? Blood filled cavity within the wall of aorta, usually between the middle third and outer third of the media. Right? Again, let me explain. So this is the aorta and right let me explain it again that as blood was moving forward here it produces an intimal tear through this tear normally blood should move like this is that right and this should be the normal blood filled cavity, normal. Is that right? What really went wrong that a jet of blood entered into media through the intima, of course, producing a cut into intima. Now, let's suppose these are the layers of the media, right? This is what I'm drawing is the outer one third of the media and here I'm drawing the middle and inner one third of the media. Now the blood which has entered through intimal tear, it start tracking within the middle two third, you can say inner two third and outer one third of the media. Either it will track distally in the aorta or it will track, yes, proximally into aorta. Naturally, what will happen? This is again the media inner one third, third. This is middle one third and here is outer one third. Now what really happens? that there is a pseudo channel created, blood filled pseudo channel created within the wall of aorta. Blood filled false channel or pseudo channel created within the wall of aorta. If patient is lucky, then this may look re-rupture. If patient is really lucky, it may re-rupture inside 
through another distal, through the second, you know, through the first intimal tear it entered, it progressed within the wall of the media, and if patient is really lucky, then it may re-rupture within the lumen, right? It may re-rupture within the lumen through the second intimal tear. But in most of the patient who are not lucky, it may rupture, it may rupture, yes. Outside producing catastrophic hemorrhage and very, very, you can say, serious medical emergency. Is that right? This is outer rupture. So let's sum it up. There, what is? Of course, on this side, it is okay. I hope this is clear to your mind. What is dissection? Now, the point which is there, that when blood enters into this and start dissecting the layers in the media, usually there is no significant dilatation. There is no significant dilatation. So due to this reason, uh, the term that there is dissecting, aorting, aneurysm should be discouraged. Previously, many doctors called it dissecting, aortic, aneurysm. Now this term should be discouraged. The reason being that even though it's a very dangerous medical situation, right, that a pseudo lumen is created within the wall of the aorta, but there's no significant dilatation of aorta, a total aorta. So there's no, you can say, well-defined aneurysm formation. So preferably it should not be called dissecting aortic aneurysm. Uh, it should be called aortic dissection or dissecting hematoma within the wall of aorta. Is it clear? Having said this thing, let's talk about what type of situations, uh, what type of patients come, under what circumstances people develop this type of dangerous complication. Then we'll come to what are the clinical presentations and what are the dangerous complications, right? Now the people who develop this type of complications is more common in men. The largest group of these patients with aortic dissections are the men around the age of 50 and they are having history of hypertension. They are having a history of hypertension. Men around the age of 50 year, right? And usually they are having a history of hypertension. So we can say about 90% of the patient with aortic dissection. So this is the strongest association. Hypertension is the strongest association with dissection of aorta. Of course, high blood pressure, it, uh, there's stronger jet effect, and blood has a tendency to create stronger jets which can cut their way through the intimal tear into media. Secondly, maybe some people say that in hypertension, the more degenerative changes within the fibromuscular layers of aorta and aortic wall is also weak, right? This is a major group. The second important group is a younger group of people, which may be men or women, younger, right? Around the age of uh, somewhere between around 20 years, right? These people have some underlying, is that right? These younger patients, right? They are having some underlying systemic or localized abnormality of connective tissue. They are having some abnormality of systemic they have some abnormality which may be systemic or localized. Localized. Localized mean only in the aorta. Systemic mean uh, in multiple systems in the body. They have some abnormality. Localized abnormality of abnormality of yes please connective tissue. Right? The classical example which is presented is Marfan syndrome. Classic, classical example is the patient with Marfan, Marfan's syndrome, Marfan syndrome. Then there are other conditions also in which there is connective tissue disorders like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. 
Now, what really goes wrong in Marfan syndrome? Who knows? We'll have a full lecture on Marfan syndrome just after the dissection and aortic dissection. But what is Marfan syndrome? Do you have any idea? We'll go into detail later. What, which protein is disturbed? There's a structural protein which plays an important role in connective tissue. That protein is mutant. If that protein is mutant, connective tissue all over the body become abnormal. And in Marfan syndrome, due to those connective tissue abnormalities, there are skeletal abnormalities, skeletal abnormalities, the ocular abnormalities we'll discuss in detail later, and they may develop cardiovascular system abnormalities in Marfan syndrome. Which protein is mutant? Yes, who is going to tell me? Anyone who good enough? It's connective tissue protein. Which protein? The protein is called? Yeah? Fibrillin. That is called? Fibrillin. The protein here is? Fibrillin. And fibrillin protein make a scaffold on which elastin proteins are deposited. On the fibrillin, which proteins are deposited? Elastin. This is elastin. So on the fibrillin, fibrillin act as a, you can say fibrillin act as a scaffolding on which there is proper arrangement of elast. There is proper arrangement of elastin protein. And fibrillin plus elastin make the elastic tissue in the body. Fibrillin plus elastin make elastic tissue in the body. Now, here elastin is not mutant, but fibrillin is mutant. And when fibrillin is not normal in Marfan syndrome, when fibrillin is not normal, elastin cannot deposit well and elastic tissue in the body is weak. It's pathologically weak. And that will lead to complications which will, we will discuss later in skeletal system and ocular system and cardiovascular system, right? And as we'll discuss in Marfan syndrome, what really happens that in the media of aorta, right, there are some uh, abnormalities in the connective tissue. Let me tell you exactly what are the abnormalities. Okay. Let's suppose these are two aortic channels I'm making. One is healthy, another is pathological, right? Now, in a healthy aortic channel, this is healthy one. What you really find that there are multiple layers of, there are multiple layers of, yes, what are these? Fibroelastic tissue and muscular elastic tissue, right? And the normal healthy aortic wall. And now I will, this is absolutely healthy. There are multiple layers of fibroelastic tissue with muscular tissue in the aortic wall. And this tissue give it the real strength. All right? This is healthy, healthy aortic wall. Now we'll see, in Marfan syndrome, what really goes wrong? Problem is with the elastin tissue. And fibrillin is not uh, normal. Due to that reason, elastin cannot deposit well. So these layers are disrupted. And within these layers, these are fragmented also. You know, elastin five, these are fragmented. And somewhere within, Now let me explain. You see that as compared to the normal, you see there are disruption of fibroelastic tissue. It's not arranged so beautifully here as it is normally arranged in a parallel fashion, right, to support the wall. So one problem which is there is that in these patients, there are medial degenerative changes. These changes are called, in the media, there are degenerative changes. And these medial degenerative changes are also called cystic changes. Cystic changes, why? Because there are some areas in between the layer of connective tissue in which, in which there is amorphous 
amorphous connective tissue is present over there. Elastic tissue is fragmented. You see here, elastic tissue fragmented. Elastic tissue fragmentation. Fragmentation. This is one problem over there, right? Other problem is there is amorphous extracellular matrix. This is amorphous. Amorphous means there is no clear cut morphology. It is just like without any structural detail. Amorphous extracellular connective tissue. Now, unfortunately, initially doctors thought that these are some sort of cyst. These are some sort of cyst. So they called it cystic degeneration. But actually these are not true cyst because we define a true cyst as a fluid filled cavity lined by epithelium. Uh, it is not it is not uh, full of fluid and it is not lined by epithelial lining. So it is not a true cyst. But still in many MCQs and many books you will find they call it medial, medial mean in the media, medial cystic degeneration this condition. But actually there is no cyst formation and more interestingly even there is no significant degeneration or necrosis. Some, some books write there is medio cystic necrosis but remember there is no necrosis and there is no cyst formation. These are again pseudosis as right and then there is elastic tissue fragmentation Right, so most frequently the problem is medial degenerative changes like cystic medial degeneration, right, there is elastic tissue fragmentation and separation of, and separation of elastic filaments, separation of elastic filaments or fibrils, fibers, right. So what we really see in normal aortic connective tissue you find multiple fibromuscular layers without any big cystic area, pseudo cystic area with there is no uh, right and there is no fragmentation and there is no pathological separation of the fiber layers. Here what you find, look here again, number one there is pathological separation of the elastic tissue fibers, number two there is fragmentation of elastic tissue, number three some areas look like cyst in which amorphous connective tissue is filled. All these things make the media strong or weak? Weak. So at the top, if there is some precipitating cause like high blood pressure, right, th that may help the blood to track into this through the intimal tear into media. And as soon as this blood under pressure discovers that media is weak, it will start dissecting upward in between the layers. Or I hope now you understand what is happening. Is it clear? So next time you have to remember in dissection of aorta, it's something which kills the patient. What really happens in dissection of aorta, right? Dissection of aorta may be due to older men with hypertension, which is the strongest association. The strongest association is not Marfan syndrome. Strongest association is old age, hypertension and men, right? Because hypertension are very common and half of the world is I think men, isn't it? So because men are very common and hypertension is very common, so even though in hypertensive men dissection is not very common, but dissection is strongly associated with hypertensive men. Is that right? In younger patients you will find if someone in a very young age developing dissection of aorta, you must think that there is some connective tissue abnormality within the aorta or aorta wall, right? The classical example is, what is this? Marfan syndrome, we will discuss that. Uh, syndrome into detail later. Then another situation is the in pregnancy, pregnancy there is slightly increased risk of dissection of aorta. We don't know why and I think there is no fun in telling that pregnancy induced pregnancy associated aortic dissection is seen only in females. Is that right? I mean, I am not going to teach that thing. Why? But you should know that in pregnancy, there is slightly increased risk for dissection of aorta. And that dissection of aorta very commonly extends into coronary area. I don't know why. Many people don't know. Right? They are yet 
discovering why it is happening in pregnancy, right? Then we come to one very clear cut association. The cause of dissection may be you, my dear fellows. There may be iatrogenic cause, atria, genic, duct cause. For example, you are you have catheterized someone aorta, and tip of the catheter is wrongly repeatedly pushed against intima or media. Is that right? So you can say catheter induced or catheter induced trauma may lead to predisposition for dissection of aorta. Am I clear? Right? Dissection induced. This dissection is induced by the trauma by the catheter. Then another condition which is associated with aortic dissection is coarctation of aorta. Coarctation of aorta. You know in coarctation of aorta what is the real pathology is that aorta has some pathologically stenosed point for example there is sphere stenosis or narrowing in a part of aorta and this, this is present congenitally we call it coarctation of aorta right of course when there is coarctation of aorta when there is coarctation of aorta uh, the dynamics for the blood flow remain normal or ab they become abnormal sure. abnormal and that may produce undue stress on the aortic wall and that may precipitate dissection of aorta. So now you must know five conditions. Hypertensive means the most important, you should remember. Most dramatic type of situation is people with connective tissue abnormalities like Marfan syndrome. Never understood up to now why aortic dissection is, may be present in some pregnant female. Ichogenic cause recently as more and more invasive catheterizations are done. Right? Coarctation of aorta, I told you, it's a congenital condition. Is that right? Now, having said all of this, now let's look at the pathological situation there. And we'll see that after the dissection of aorta, what type of complications develop in the patient. Right? What are the clinical presentations? And what are the different complications as dissection is advancing in within the patient's aortic wall? Okay, let's make it. Now here is your ferroted system and here is right subclavian. Here is left carotid. Left subclavian. Now, uh, here is an artery. What is this here? Okay, let me enlarge the heart so that it becomes more clear to you.
this is mitral valve and here is which valve aortic valve right and this is left ventricular suppose this is the opening of right coronary artery is that right let's suppose we make here coronary artery is that right now what we really want to see that once dissection of aorta develops what type of complications can be there this is right coronary artery this is the normal blood channel is that right now we have to see what really happens the blood supply to the heart in dissection of aorta number one in dissection of aorta there has to be a first intimal tear suppose this is proximal intimal tear so first we have to talk about the origin of dissection origin of dissection right origin of dissection is according to the origin of dissection these aneurysms are classified i will explain the diagram here these three this is distal subclavian so according to region distal look number one dissection start and involve the ascending part it involve the ascending part of aorta and then it may move distally or proximally right now in patient number 1 dissection started from the just distal to the aortic root and it involved the what is this portion ascending aorta in patient number 2 it started in the same fashion but dissection involved it started from ascending part right and it went very very distally and it has involved a very very large part of aorta right in third patient the origin has been look here distal to left subclavian origin has been here and first and second origin has been in the ascending aorta now what is the difference attention please in first and second patient origin of dissection is within the ascending aorta and in these patients it can move proximally towards the heart as well as it can move distally little bit or it may move distally far down is that right this type of aortic uh, dissections are called type a these are called type a type a dissections and where origin of dissection is in the distal to left subclavian and it is moving only distally we call it type b aortic dissections so there are type a aortic dissections and there are type b aortic dissection again listen carefully we come back to this diagram attention if this intimal entry entrance right and in first intimal uh, tear is within root of aorta or ascending part of aorta right this is type a type a are classified as two 
टाइप ए विच रिमेन अप टू असेंडिंग पार्ट ऑफ एयरटा और विच मे गो डिस वे एंड टाइप बी आर विच ऑलवेज टेक रिजन डिस्टल टू लेफ्ट सब क्लेवियन आर्टरी दीज टू आर द मोस्ट कॉमन साइट ऑफ रिजन ऑफ डायसेक्शन रिजन ऑफ डायसेक्शन इज इधर इन द रूट ऑफ एयरटा जस्ट डिस्टल टू द एयरटिक वैल्व और रिजन ऑफ डायसेक्शन इज जस्ट डिस्टल टू द लेफ्ट सब क्लेवियन यू मे बी वॉन्ड्रिंग दैट वाई these are two uh, two sites so commonly involved in the origin of dissection answer is that these two points of the aorta are relatively fixed because these these two points are relatively fixed so when jet of the blood hits intima just in the root of aorta or jet of the blood hits intima just distal to the left subclavian origin it have a tendency to produce intimal tear am i clear in other parts of aorta aorta is not so much fixed so when there is extreme jet of you can say blood uh, aorta moves with the jet and does not allow the tear am i clear right again let me repeat i was talking about the origin the origin of dissection starts with an intimal tear an intimal tear may be a horizontal tear intimal tear may be a horizontal tear or it may be jagged edges and not transverse this is transverse tear or tear may be oblique but where the tear is situated tear may be situated in ascending aorta or it may be situated just distal to the left subclavian if it is in ascending aorta it is called type a and if it is distal to left subclavian it is called type b now you may be thinking why i'm so much stressing type a and b there's a big reason type a is, has very very dangerous complications mortality in type a is very high 50% patient with type a lesions dissections die within 48 hours 50% of the patients with type a lesions die within 48 hours and at after 1 month of the dissection type a dissection only 10% are alive it means 90 people 90% of the people die right if they are not treated 90% of the patient die if they are not treated the patient with untreated type a so this is something where you should wish not to have a better to get the b if you really going to have it because b has less mortality right if origin is distal to this point and it is moving only distally mortality is 10 to 20% here mortality at 1 month is 90% why i will explain later because here dissection can come proximally and damage the performance of the heart right i will explain that so is, is it clear now why i am stressing on type a and type b as type a personality is dangerous type a dissections are also dangerous is that right now if it is clear let's go into detail of dissection process i told you that what is the origin of dissection once let's suppose in our example we say origin of dissection is here and this is the dissecting hematoma which has entered here now from here next point is progression next point is progression of dissection progression of dissection now dissection may progress distally it may progress distally or it may progress yes proximally now we'll see what are the complications of proximal what are the complications of proximal extension let's suppose here i put peri cardium okay let's make this diagram little modified so that this is coronary artery and here is your what is this here peri cardium now you imagine 
when it is coming proximally, root of aorta, some part of the root of aorta is enveloped by pericardium. Some part of root of aorta is anatomically normally covered by pericardium. Now, when it it is turning proximally, it may rupture outward and then it will fill the, what is this? It will fill the pericardial sac and if blood is very rapidly hemorrhaging into pericardial sac, that may lead to, yes please, yeah, that is pericardial tamponade, pericardial cardiac, simply call it cardiac tempo. Nade, we call it cardiac tamponade. Of course, that may kill the person very within few minutes. So it's going to be a dangerous situation. It is hemocardium, hemopericardium. When blood is coming into, pure blood is coming into pericardial sac, it is hemopericardium. And this hemopericardium is, if it is enough, and usually it is enough, that so much blood collect into peritoneal, sorry, peri cardial cavity that this blood compresses the ventricles and compresses the heart, right? And heart cannot work well. If pericardium compresses the heart, right? And both ventricles are collapsed due to the pressure exerted by the blood into pericardium, then what will happen? That patient will develop a problem. What is that? There will be rising JVP because look, venous blood cannot enter into right side of the heart and there will be falling systemic blood pressure, systemic blood pressure because left heart cannot maintain the cardiac output and muffled heart sound or distant, distant heart sounds, distant heart sounds, right. This condition is called, this is Beck's triangle, Beck's triangle and when a patient develop excessive amount of fluid in pericardium, for example, in this case, that aortic dissection moved proximally and ruptured outer into pericardial sac and rapidly filled the pericardial sac with the blood and blood filled pericardial sac compresses on the cardiac chambers and right heart and left heart cannot work well when they are compressed. So right heart cannot accommodate the blood coming back. So jugular venous pressure start rising and left heart cannot maintain the cardiac output. So there is progressively falling blood pressure and with that heart sounds may be muffled or coming from intercortica, right? Heart sounds are very, very distant. Is that right? So this situation is called cardiac tamponade. So some patient die of cardiac tamponade. Then another catastrophic complication is, look here. If this dissection is moving proximally and it moves around, what is this? What is this? Coronary artery. The dissection goes around the origin of coronary artery. Let me tell you how dissection can go around an origin of an artery. Look. This is a wall of aorta and look here. What is this? This is the origin of a branch of This uh, phenomenon, you have to understand it more clearly. Now look, let's suppose I'm showing this is the aorta and this is one of its branch, which may be renal branch or coronary branch or any branch which is coming out of aorta. Now what really happens? When dissection is coming like this, right? This dissection will extend into this area. You see, when it will extend here, it will build a pressure here and compress it. So do you think blood can continue into branch? No. Is that right? Am I clear? Another way to understand this is that we show a branch here. That there is a branch here. This is a branch. Is that right? Now, if dissection goes around here, it will move around it. 
So what really happens, sometimes dissection from the wall of aorta extend into the wall of the artery originating from aorta. And its media and intima, look, adventitia and intima, they are separated due to dissection in the media. Now, when intima will be compressed inside, can blood move well? No. So this is one of the major clinical complications which kill the patient with dissection of aorta. Right, so now you understand what will happen that around the coronary artery origin, usually, dis I don't know why, but dissections prefer to involve the origin of right coronary artery. Dissections prefer to involve the origin of right coronary artery. So we can say dissections very commonly, the proximally progressing dissections very commonly involve the ostium of right coronary artery and if right coronary artery is occluded, you will develop what type of myocardial infarction? Inferior wall myocardial infarction because posterior inferior area of the left ventricle is supplied by the right coronary. Rest of the left ventricle is mostly supplied by the left coronary artery. So usually these patients may develop inferior wall myocardial infarction. So what complications they are developing with proximal advancement? Number one, they have developed cardiac tamponade. They have developed inferior wall, of course inferior wall, inferior wall of the left ventricle. Inferior wall myocardial infarction, both things can kill and there are more arrangements to kill the patient. Look here. You see this is aortic wall, valve. What is here? This is aortic valve. Now look, if dissection extend under this aortic valve connective tissue and go proximally, it means the aortic valve was attached with the wall of the aorta. And if the base of the valve was attached on special area on the aorta. Let me remove this coronary and show it more completely. That this is the valve and this is the ring of the valve. Right? Now, valve is supported, valve is well supported by the connective tissue here. Now, when dissection will move proximally, it will cut off the support. And if the support is broken, valve cannot hang a stand at its position. It cannot be held properly at its position. So what really happens, that valve becomes loose and it starts acute, acute aortic valve regurgitation. Because this valve is no more now strong, and this leaflet, when its base is lost, it cannot work well. Am I clear? So we can say, look here, when dissections move proximally, they can do three dangerous things. Number one, cardiac tamponade. Number two, uh, including the origin of right coronary artery and producing inferior wall, MI, and maybe arrhythmias also. Number three, severe acute Yes, severe, acute, aortic valve, yes, aortic regurgitation, regurgitation, right? Another thing, so it means when dissection will start, first of all, it will produce very severe pain. The pain of dissection is very important to be differentiated from other causes of pain in chest. Usually dissection start with sudden, very severe, Ex excruciating pain, sudden, severe, excruciating pain in the chest which radiates backward, which radiates backward. If dissection is moving, you know, upward and backward, then it moves downward. Then the pain will radiate downward towards the abdomen. You can understand why, because it is ripping the wall of aorta. Right, so this is sudden severe cutting pain, excruciating pain. 
If you really want to differentiate, many times this pain is confused with the pain of myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is also severe pain. Aortic dissection is also severe pain. But my, myocardial infarction start gradually. But aortic dissection pain is very severe and sudden. Then myocardial pain or ischemic pain is dull and diffuse. But aortic dissection pain is not dull. It is sharp, cutting, cutting pain, sharp pain. Not dull and diffuse. It is well localized pain. Then pain of the, what is that? Ischemic heart disease that radiate to the neck or to the jaw or to the left arm or to the both arms or to the epigastrium. But pain of dissection of aorta typically radiate backward. So very sudden pain and radiating backward, think of aortic dissection, not myocardial infarction. Of course, we will do ECG and other investigations as soon as possible, right? So this is sudden pain, severe pain, rapidly rising to intensity, excruciating, ripping, radiating backward, upward, then downward towards the abdomen. Is that right? Now, other problems which develop with this aortic dissection. Look, as this dissection is moving distally, look here, it may go around, what is this? Region of, what was this artery? It may go around region of carotid system and subclavian system. It may go more distally. If it is moving like that, is that right? Now blood pressure on the right side of the pulse will fall, but blood pressure on the left side of the pulse will be maintained if it has not yet involved this one. So there will be unequal pulses. What will be there? Unequal pulses and unequal blood pressures in the right arm and the left arm. So whenever someone comes with very severe very sharply rising, cutting pain in the chest, immediately take the pulses on right side and left side and take the blood pressure in the right arm and the left arm. And if there is significant difference, think of dissection. A very serious medical emergency, right? Then another thing, that if this dissection involves the carotid system, in the arm that told you what will happen? There may be limb ischemia even. Patient may develop limb ischemia, patient may develop unequal pulse volumes between the right and the left side, patient may develop unequal blood pressures. Then if this dissection extends along the carotid system, that may produce hemiplegia because blood flow to the cerebral hemisphere will be blocked and that may produce hemiplegia. So, so many patients after severe chest pain, they may develop hemiplegia, very rapidly developing symptoms of hemiplegia. And when hemiplegia is developing, it is a carotid, regions of carotid are involved in dissection, right? Then if anterior spinal artery is involved, if dissection moves along the anterior spinal artery, patient may develop paraplegia, right? paraplegia and then of course look if the section is going distally and it goes to abdomen if it goes to abdomen then what may happen it may involve the origin of renal artery and patient may become suddenly angioric if both renal arteries are involved patient may become angioric very rapidly renal failure sometimes it produces extend into mesenteric arteries as they are originating from aorta and there will be severe abdominal pain, central abdominal pain due to severe mesenteric ischemia. Is that right? So what we have learned that if it has involved some branch going to spinal cord, right, that may produce transverse myelitis because the spinal cord, one of the aortic branch which is going to supply the spinal cord and big portion of spinal cord become infarcted, right? That is called transverse myelitis. Is that right? Then of course, the areas when it ruptures outward, right? Not only it can rupture, look here, not only it can rupture into cardiac tamponade, maybe it start distal and rupture into pleura. 
it may rupture into pleural cavity or in the abdomen it may rupture into peritoneal cavity. So three cavities will love. First of all, aortic dissection is itself an abnormal cavity in the wall of aorta. Full filled, blood filled, abnormal channel in the wall of aorta. And three cavities in which it tend to rupture is pericardial cavity, pleural cavity or peritoneal cavity with catastrophic hemorrhage and rapidly falling blood pressure. Patient, go, patient goes into shock. Is that clear? Now, in such patient, how would you treat them? Is that right? Now, before treatment, if you love to investigate, the best investigation, what is the best investigation? Ideally speaking, if really available rapidly, the best investigation is trans, trans esophageal echocardiography. The best investigation is trans esophageal echocardiography. It is the best one. Trans esophageal echocardiography. Why? Number one, transesophageal echocardiography can be done rapidly. It can be done at the bedside. Patient does not need to be transferred to some special place or department. And transesophageal echocardiography is very, very sensitive, right? It is about 98% specific for this diagnosis and 98% sensitive for this diagnosis. So sensitivity and specificity of transesophageal echocardiography is very, very high for the aortic dissection diagnosis. But other investigations, if it's not available, you can use dynamic CT scan, dynamic computer uh, CT scan, or you can use even MRI. Sometimes the question is, which one is the best? Answer is, which is available first of all, and which can be interpreted best in that hospital setting? Because here minutes matter. Patient die very rapidly. You have to make diagnosis and start the treatment. So if it is not available, you see out of these three, which, which is the best available? Chest x-ray many a times fools you, even though classically they say in aortic dissection on the chest x-ray you may find widening of mediastinum. What you find? Mediastinal images widened, but that is not so commonly seen. Out of maybe 100 patients, only in 10 dissections you find widening, you will miss the 90%. So chest x-ray is really not the best investigation. Is that right? ECG you do in these patients. ECG may be normal or it may show left ventricular hypertrophy. ECG may be normal or it may show left ventricular hypertrophy features due to chronic hypertension or it may show features of inferior myocardial infarction. ECG may show the features of inferior myocardial infarction, is it right? But again, before I close, the best investigation if everything is available is trans esophageal echocardiography, is that right? Then how would you treat it? First of all, of course you will admit the patient, you will be sensible enough, right? Immediately admit the patient, you know something very serious is going wrong with the patient and check the blood pressure and keep the patient blood pressure, systolic blood pressure somewhere between 100 and 110. Because if blood pressure is high, the high blood pressure drives the dissection. High blood pressure drives the dissection, right? It uh, accelerates the progression of dissection. So best is that you keep, what you will do? You will do anti-hypertensive therapy, right? If blood pressure is high. It's best to keep the blood pressure somewhere around 100 to 110 millimeter of mercury. The drugs which we usually use is, we use intravenous nitroprusside or nitroprusside through nitric oxide pathway, it dilates the vessels and brings the blood pressure down. Intravenous nitroprusside or we give intravenous esmolol, E-S-M-O-L-O-L, esmolol 
which is very ultra short acting beta blocker intravenously given or we gave labetolol which can block beta receptors as, as well as alpha receptors labetolol so the three drugs of choice to bring the blood pressure down nitro prusite or you use yes esmolol or you use labetolol any any one of them not all of them that maybe dissection does not kill and your therapy kills right so any one of these and with that of course you have to talk uh, expert uh, help you have to take and uh, repair of dissection will be planned right but again all the patients with type A dissections should undergo emergency aortic valve wall repair. Is that right? Surgical repair has to be done. 